Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, once again, I'm going to be doing another gear review. This is the Hiking Bike Eolus Zero Degree Fahrenheit Down Sleeping Bag. Let's get into it. Okay, to begin with, this isn't actually my sleeping bag. This is one of my friend's sleeping bags. Uh, he's loaned it to me for this review. Thank you very much. Um, this is in a size medium. I use a size large. I actually previously owned this model of sleeping bag for two years until about two months ago when I upgraded to a new bag that I'll talk about later. This bag is made by a company called Hike and Bike that are based in the United States. It's a very affordable sleeping bag. I think at the time of this, it's around about $150 or $150. Uh, euros on Amazon. The temperature rating of this sleeping bag is something I've been confused about for quite some time because it is known as the Eolus uh, zero degree Fahrenheit bag. But that temperature is somewhat misleading. That's actually the extreme limit of this bag. It's closer to a zero degree Celsius comfort temperature and about a minus 10 degree uh, comfort limit. The bag features a 20 denier ripstop nylon inner and outer. It's a very smooth, it's a very silky, very comfortable liner and outer fabric. It can get a little bit sweaty if you overheat in this bag. The sleeping bag features a drawstring hood that can cinch down around your head and trap in heat, as well as a secondary uh, baffle and cinch cord around the shoulders that traps heat there. Comes with a special YKK zipper that actually prevents the zipper from jamming, and I find it is actually quite effective. And I haven't seen this kind of zipper on any sleeping bag, even on sleeping bags more than two or three times the price. So that's impressive, and I uh, thoroughly enjoy that feature. There's also an internal pocket here, just above the shoulder baffle, that is great for storing a phone in if you're going to very cold environments and you don't want to worry about your batteries getting cold. The whole bag features vertical baffles that run the entire length of the sleeping bag. And I have found that while it is possible to redistribute down yourself based on your own needs, it can and often does migrate during the night and you can end up with spots that don't actually have any insulation at all. That is somewhat of an annoyance. The bag weighs approximately 1.5 kilograms and features just over 900 grams of 800 fill power hydrophobically treated goose down that resists the absorbing moisture uh, in damp conditions much better than untreated down. Which brings me to some of the cons of this sleeping bag as I see it. One of the first ones I've noticed is that the DWR water repellency on the outside of the bag fails pretty quickly. So if you're in a wet condensation prone environment, uh, the outside of the bag won't repel moisture as well as some other bags. Previously, I had had an earlier version of the sleeping bag that didn't come with the uh, hydrophobically treated down. And I did the hydrophobic treatment afterwards using uh, Nick Wax Downproof treatment, which I found actually uh, extended the use case of the sleeping bag massively. Uh, I took that bag across Iceland in the shoulder season, experienced temperatures down to about minus five, quite a lot of uh, condensation and the bag performed really well. Now, the other major concern I have with it is as a person who's six foot four, the size large is actually, I would say too large for me. Um, it's almost seven foot tall and you'll have some serious trouble fitting the size large inside a tent. When inside a tent, I would usually put a raincoat over the end of the bag to keep the condensation from uh, soaking my feet in the night. It's very wide at the shoulders and even in the legs, and it takes up a lot of space inside of a tent. It's fine when you're in a two person or a three person tent, but I'd have some serious trouble fitting a sleeping bag of this size inside a one man tent, which is also the ultimate reason why I upgraded my sleeping bag. This is the compression bag that the uh, sleeping bag comes with. Um, it doesn't compress it as much as I'd like. I think if these straps were shorter, you could uh, compress it down even smaller. It isn't very waterproof at all, which is a serious downside. I wish this was a dry bag as well, but for the price point, I can hardly complain, I think. One other major concern that I don't appreciate is that this bag ships inside of its compression bag, which leads me to believe that these bags are stored in their compression bags in warehouses, which is not good for the long-term performance of the down. Higher end sleeping bags that I've bought would come stored inside of their lofting bag, which is just like a, a breathable oversized bag to allow the sleeping bag to just be stored without being compressed and without uh, damaging the down. So in conclusion, I would say that this bag for the money is one of the best sleeping bags that money can buy. So yeah, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, the share, the comment, whatever you, you want to do. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.